Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today, we're doing an engine teardown on our Razor 900. This is part two of our engine rebuild series on the Razor 900. Now, our machine is a 2014 four-seater, but the procedure would be similar for all of the 900s. Just make sure you refer to your model-specific service manual for more information and proper procedures. So on this, if you haven't watched part one on how to pull your engine yet, you'll want to do that. But for today, we're just disassembling the engine. So let's go ahead and get into this thing. To do this job, we're using some rags, safety glasses, rubber gloves, some common hand tools, including sockets, Allen keys, torque bits, as well as some specialty tools. So we have our engine stand adapter plate, our cylinder holding and camshaft timing tool, a strap wrench, this is gonna hold our flywheel. We also have the flywheel puller, and then a few other common things like a rubber mallet, pliers, a pick, and then you wanna stay organized throughout the process, so we're also using some Ziploc bags. To tear this motor down, there's a couple different ways to do it. You can do it without an engine stand, but it's gonna be difficult to loosen some of the bolts. And same with torquing everything back down, it's gonna be hard to get the correct torque and hold the engine. So in my opinion, the best way to do this is with the engine stand. So to get this engine stand adapter plate in place, what we did, we've got our transmission mounting plate. We removed that. It's got eight bolts in that. And then we also removed the starter and this adapter plate just mounts right where the starter was. So now that we got this mounted up, we're gonna remove the valve cover. Now to remove this cover, we already washed the outside of this engine. We also want to blow down here in the spark plug holes. And that way it just eliminates from getting any contaminants on our engine parts. So from there, we've got four T40 Torx bit bolts and we'll go ahead and remove those. So what we need to do now is get this PTO side cylinder on top dead center compression. And if you don't know what the PTO side is, it's the side that takes the primary drive clutch. And what top dead center compression means is we're going to put the piston at its highest point on the compression stroke, meaning that no valves are open. So both of these cam loads are going to be facing out. So to do that, we'll remove both spark plugs and then we'll remove the stator cover. To get this stator cover off, it's gonna be easier if I remove this cooling hose out of the way. After that, I'm just gonna loosen the bolts on the stator cover with the eight millimeter T handle and I'll do it in a crisscross pattern. Now we'll take a 19 millimeter socket. I'm gonna turn the bolt on this flywheel and get this PTO side cylinder on top dead center compression. And again, we're looking for both cam lobes to be facing outward. And then we've got an eye on this intake cam with two lines. These are level with the cylinder head. And then the exhaust has the E with the two lines level with the cylinder head. So why we want it in this position is with this cylinder at top dead center, it's the timing on the other cylinder is different and you want as little pressure on the valve springs as possible when you remove these camshaft caps. But before we remove the camshaft caps, what we're gonna do is we'll take off our tensioner, remove this chain guide, and then we're gonna remove these sprockets. So what I'm gonna do now, I've got this 21 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna hold the intake camshaft in place and just loosen this cam sprocket bolt do the same thing on the exhaust cam. And then we're actually going to rotate the engine just a little bit so we can get access to these bottom two bolts. And we're going to remove those bolts all the way. Then we'll put it back on top dead center on the PTO side. And then we can remove both of these bolts out of the cam sprockets and completely remove the cam sprockets. Now with these sprockets pulled out, I'm actually just gonna drop the cam chain down in there 
and not worry about it. We're not going to be turning the engine over anymore anytime soon. So we'll go ahead and proceed with the camshaft removal. I'll start this with this front cam holder that was right by the sprockets. This camshaft holder was on there pretty tight. So what I did, I just used these bolts where the valve cover normally screws in and just kind of use those as a little leverage to pull up on it. All right, to get these camshafts out, it's important to remove these caps evenly and you want to do it in a crisscross pattern. So now that we have no pressure on that now, I'm just going to back these all the way out. And when you're taking these out, make sure you keep track of the dowel pins because you don't want to drop those down somewhere where you're going to lose them. And one more thing about the camshaft, when you take these out, make sure you keep track of the intake and exhaust and maybe even use a paint pen to mark them so you know which one goes where. Now we can remove these buckets and keep in mind, all of these buckets are going to be different. They actually have the shim built into them. So when we remove them, it's very important to keep all of these buckets in order so they can go back to their original positions. To get this cylinder head ready to remove, I'm gonna remove this thermostat housing. On the other side, I'm gonna remove the radiator coolant hose and then also these hoses going to our oil cooler. We'll remove those as well. With the hoses disconnected, I'm gonna remove the three bolts holding this water pump in place and then I'm just gonna wiggle it a little bit and pull it out. Next, I'm just gonna take the eight millimeter T-handle and remove this cooling elbow by removing the two bolts. I'm also gonna remove both of these intake boots. Now that we're ready to remove the cylinder head, there's two bolts right here in the side. I'm gonna use the eight millimeter T-handle on them. Now we can move on to the six bolts holding the cylinder head down. And these bolts, you're gonna to wanna to remove in a crisscross pattern. And we're just gonna go about an eighth turn at a time initially, and then we'll remove them the rest of the way. Now we're ready to remove the cylinder head, so we'll go ahead and remove this. After that, we'll go ahead and remove this head gasket. Now that the cylinder head is off, there's nothing holding these cylinders in place, and we don't want to remove them until we have the connecting rod caps pulled off. So we will be flipping the engine over in a later step, so right now, we're gonna install the cylinder holding and camshaft holding tool. And we'll just barely tighten these bolts down, holding it in place. We just, all it's doing is keeping the cylinder from falling off when it's upside down. Next, we'll remove the starter torque limit gear. Next, we'll take the strap wrench and we'll put this on the flywheel. And we'll take our 19 millimeter socket on a breaker bar we'll break this flywheel nut loose. After that, we've got our flywheel puller and this thing is actually reverse thread and ours already has some grease on all these threads too. If yours doesn't, you're gonna wanna apply some grease to the threads. So we'll turn this counterclockwise to tighten it on here and make sure this center bolt is all the way backed out. Now I'm gonna tighten up this center bolt until it stops. 
And on this puller, I've got a 32 millimeter inch and a 29 millimeter socket. And we'll just tighten this down until the flywheel pops off. Now I had to switch to a breaker bar to get enough torque on this to break the flywheel loose. When you pull this off, keep in mind you've got this starter clutch on the back. It's a one-way clutch and a quick test. Should spin clockwise and completely stop if you try to go counterclockwise. And don't forget, you're going to want to remove this woodruff key. That way you don't lose it. After that, we'll remove these two cam chain guides. So one of them is a T40. On this other side, we've got a six millimeter Allen. We're gonna remove this bracket. This has this cooling elbow and also holds the dipstick. Now I'm gonna move on to the oil filter and we've just got a, a strap wrench to help us get this thing removed. Now with the five millimeter Allen key, I'm gonna remove this oil cooler. And then we also wanna get these O-rings out of the way. We will be replacing them with new ones. All right, before we flip this motor over, what we're gonna do is just pull this drain plug out. And even though we drained the oil already, we just wanna make sure nothing collected down at the bottom and let any of it out. Now we can flip it over and we'll pull this oil pan. So to get this drain pan off, we actually have 16 bolts on it. And we've got three that are a 13 millimeter head and the rest are just an eight millimeter head. Just like anything else, I'm just doing a crisscross pattern to get these all loosened up. To get the drain pan off, I've got a little prying tab right here. You wanna be real careful with that. Let's see if we can break it loose with that. You definitely wanna make sure that all of your bolts are out. Now that we've got the oil pan off, I've got this oil screen right here. I'm going to remove that. Now I'm going to remove this oil pump. And to do that, we've got to remove the bolts, but there's actually some dowel pins in there too. And if you don't want to pull this gear off the end of the oil pump, you're going to have to remove all the dowel pins, and then we can remove the chain and slide this out. And our oil pump left the O-ring behind, so I'm just gonna grab that. At this point, we need to flip this engine back over. There are 13 bolts on top of here that I'm gonna take out. Now, they're eight millimeter heads, and then these ones on top, they're gonna be your 13 millimeter head. All right, at this point, we can now flip the engine back over to the bottom side. There's 11 bolts in the bottom of this crankcase half. We need to get them all out, obviously, and this one in the corner is kind of tricky to get to. What I found works is a quarter inch drive, 13 millimeter socket, and we just adapted it to the 3 8 inch drive ratchet. Now we can split this case half to do that. You might need to tap on it a little bit to break it loose. It does have some silicone here. Now we're gonna remove the balancer shaft, but before we would do that, I just wanna point out, this does need to be timed on reassembly. So 
These two dots right here are what need to be lined up. Now we need to remove the connecting rod caps and keep in mind, they need to go back in the same way they come off. To help us do that, they are stamped. They've got a number on this side of them and then the other side, they actually have a measurement number and we'll talk about that later on when we're talking about sizing the bearings. So to get these off, we're just using a 12 point socket. Now keep in mind that we will need to replace these bolts when we go back together with them. Now when I'm pulling this off, you can see we've got a little bit of wear on this plane bearing. We'll talk more about that later on, but anytime you have this stuff apart, it's recommended that we replace all the plane bearings. Now, since these rod caps can kind of stick, I usually just like to take these bolts after they're loose and just kind of use them as a little bit of leverage to help get this off. Now we can remove the crankshaft and when we do that, we're gonna take this oil pump chain and our cam chain with it. Now we'll go ahead and we're gonna remove all of these plain bearings. Like I said, we wanna make sure we're using new ones when we go to reassemble this. Now we're gonna rotate the engine back over. We'll remove the cylinder holding plate. Now we can remove the cylinder from the upper crankcase half and you might have to help tap it off just a little bit. And we're just pulling the cylinder out with the pistons and connecting rods still in place. And then next we'll just take the cylinder base gasket off. Next we'll remove these plain bearings from the lower crankcase half. Now to remove the piston from the connecting rod, we'll remove the snap ring. That's gonna allow us to push this wrist pin or piston pin, whatever you wanna call it, out of the way, and then we'll slide the piston off. Now we'll do the same thing on the other piston. Now we can remove this crankshaft seal and just pay attention to the orientation of it too. Remove the two counterbalancer bearings in the upper crankcase half. And then we'll also remove this plastic retainer. All right, that's it for disassembling all of the engine. It's really not that bad a job to do. It just takes a little bit of patience. Now, if you need any parts for your machine, be sure to check out our website. We've got a lot of different options on there. And for cleaning and inspecting these parts, follow us over to part three of the engine rebuild series. Now, we didn't disassemble the cylinder head. We're doing a separate video just on that. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got a lot of awesome content on there. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching.